In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Gauss View Builder to build a molecule. So Gauss View is the graphical interface that works with Gaussian. Gaussian actually performs the calculations. Gauss View helps you create input files and molecules and visualize the results of your calculations. So we're going to focus right now on just building molecules. So there's two main windows. This upper window has all the interface commands for Gaussian or Gauss View. Down here is where we're going to be building our molecule. Right now, I have a carbon tetrahedral, so an sp3 hybridized carbon selected as my current building fragment. But I can change that easily just by clicking this button, and you can see I can pick any different element I want on the periodic table. And for each different element, I can pick different hybridization states. So if I want an sp hybridized, or an sp2 hybridized, or I could go to an oxygen and pick um, a double bonded oxygen, and so on. So I'm going to pick, I want to build formaldehyde, so I'm going to pick the sp2 hybridized carbon atom. And then I can just go ahead and click down here to place that carbon atom wherever I want. Now for this first one it doesn't matter, I don't have anything else placed. And you'll notice that by default it puts two hydrogen atoms there. We can replace those later if we like. It also leaves this dangling bond. Um, unsaturated so we can go ahead and fill that in. So to build a formaldehyde molecule I'm just going to come back up here I'm going to select the carbon trivalent button again and switch to oxygen pick the doubly bonded oxygen and I'm just going to click right here at the end of those dangling bonds and I've created my formaldehyde. Now suppose I wanted to replace those hydrogens with fluorines because I wanted that instead I could come select fluorine and then I could just click, once I have fluorine as my active atom, I can just click on those hydrogens to replace them. And so now I have COF2 instead of CH2O. Now, it, in, the basic thing you can do is, of course, building up from individual atoms like we just did. But in some cases, it may be advantageous to take advantage of some of the fragments, pre-built fragments that Gauss View has. So for example, up here you'll see these buttons for element fragments, which is what we were just using, ring fragments, which allow you to pick from various different rings that are pre-built for you. So for example, I could just place a benzene ring. I'm going to undo that because I don't want to ruin my molecule. Um, you can also do various other types of functional groups, and these are groups. You can see here are some examples of some common organic functional groups. Uh, there's biological fragments, which allow you to pick from amino acids or nucleosides. And then you can, for example, in the amino acids, you can pick which amino acid you're using and whether it's central fragment, it's at the N terminal end, or the C terminal end, and so on. And there's also a function that lets you define your own custom fragments if you tend to be using a lot of different fragments. Now when you build the molecules, by default they're going to adopt VSEPR type geometry rules. You may want to change that, however. First off, if you just want to see, look at how long a bond length is, or measure an angle or a dihedral, you can use this question mark icon up here, this inquire one. And so if I click two atoms, down here now it's going to show me the bond length. It's a 1.35 angstrom bond length. If I click a third atom, it shows me the angle. It's just shy of 120 degrees in this case. If I click a fourth atom, it's going to show me the dihedral angle, which for 1, 2, 3, 4 happens to be 180 degrees. Now suppose I felt that I was certain that the CO bond length needed to be longer than 1.284. I could come up to this bond, modify bond button here, click on the two atoms I'm interested in, and it will open up this window. And this window allows me to, one, change the bond type from single, double, triple, etc. Though it's important to recognize this is just for the sake of your pretty cartoon. This does not change the quantum mechanics at all. This is just how do you want your picture to look um, and teaching Gaussian that what you think it is. But again, it has no bearing on the actual calculation itself. It's only for the sake of the pictures you make. And then you can use these sliders or this box to change the length of your bond. And you can also change the behavior. You could, for example, say that I want the first atom 1 fixed and everything attached to it, and I only want it moving atom 2. That doesn't matter so much in this case, but when you have more complicated molecules, you may wish to force it to move certain atoms and not other ones. So you can use these functions to do that. Hit cancel to go back. 
Similarly, you can modify bond angles using this angle tool up here. So click three atoms and you get your thing and this allows you to modify the angles. And again, I could, for example, choose to fix the first one and only allow it to move the second one and so on. And similarly, there's a modified dihedral button up here which requires you to click all four atoms. And you can see we're changing the dihedrals as we do that. Now if you have a sp2 hybridized, um, or let's say a double bonded oxygen, for example, and you say, you know what, I actually want that to be an OH, you can use this add valence button up here. So I can click on that and add a valence, and now it's switched it from a, just a double bond oxygen to more one with two th things bonded to it. Of course, it doesn't bother updating the cartoon here um, that says this is a double bond. So if I wanted to change that because I know this should be a single bond, then I would again go back to the modify bond menu and I could select those two atoms and change it to a single bond. But if I decide, no, what, that was a mistake, I want to delete that hydrogen I just added, I can use this delete atom button and come back and get rid of it. Finally, um, there are a few features. There's up here, um, there's this clean function, which sort of just does a, if, if you happen to be drawing a complicated molecule and some of your bond angles and distances have gotten a little messed up, you can hit the clean and it will just try to apply the basic rules again to simplify and make the molecule look nice, get typical bond lengths and so on. You might try the symmetrize button as a way to try to enforce a certain point group symmetry if you're interested. Um, you can also come to this atom list editor and this atom list editor lets you see all the different atoms you have and it's showing you both the Cartesian coordinates it's generated for those from your molecule as well as the Z matrix. So notice the Z matrix is reordered a little bit compared to the way you do it when you're writing one by hand. Here they're listing what it's bonded to, what it's making an angle with, and what it's making a dihedral angle with, the atoms. And then here are all the distances, angles, and dihedral angles. So it's just the columns have been reorganized relative to what we talked about. Um, but this does let you see the dihedral angles and so on. And you can actually click in these boxes and change these manually if you want as well. So this is another way you can modify your structure. All right. With that, we have our molecule, and we'd be ready to go ahead and do a calculation. I'll save that for another video. Hope this was helpful.